Assalamu alaikum and a huge welcome to all of our participants for today's webinar organized by Simeon entitled Elevating the Talent and Potential for Students with Disability Through Art and Culture. My name is Noor Harisha Ramli from Training and Consultation Division and I'm your MC for today. Now, here is the agenda for this webinar. We shall start today's session with Mr. Stephanus Lucas from Special Education School, Tuaran Sabah, Malaysia, followed by Mr. Dede Suprianto from Ministry of Education, Culture and Research, Indonesia. Next, Mr. Nutan Surin Peng from Thai Blind Symphony Orchestra, Thailand. And last but definitely not least, Mr. Alshamir Brian Barrera Aripudin from University of Southeastern Philippines. For this webinar, we also include the special segment with parents and children with our special guest, Madam Heng Yo Ui from Special Education School Tuaran Sabah, Malaysia, and Associate Professor Architect Nur Hashima Mohammed Nordin, the founder and art manager of Art Jamila Gallery. To all our esteemed speakers, thank you for joining us. Now, without further ado, it is my honor to introduce a person whose dedication and commitment for 26 years toward education, special educational needs, and the community with special needs that are highly admirable, not just among us here in Malaysia, but known among senior member countries as well. It is my honor to welcome the director of Simeon Malaysia, Dr. Hajar Hanani Harun Rashid to deliver her welcoming remarks. Doctor, the floor is yours. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Dr. Muhammad Azizani Majalil, Deputy Director of Simeon Simeon Organizing Committee. Our speakers for today, Mr. Al Shami Brian Barrera Haripudin. Assistant Professor 3, Teaching Music Education, Creative Movement, Motor Learning and Professional Education, University of Southeastern Philippines. Mr. Dede Suprianto, Teacher Trainer, Ministry of Education and Culture, Indonesia. Mr. Stephanus Lucas, Music Education Teacher, Sekolah Kebangsaan Pendidikan Khas Tuaran Sabah Malaysia, Mr. Nutan Surimpeng, Orchestra Coordinator, Thai Blind Symphony Orchestra Thailand, Madam Heng Yuui, Vice President of Parents Teachers Association, Sekolah Kebangsaan Pendidikan Khas Tuaran Sabah Malaysia, Associate Professor Retired, Architect, Interior Designer No Hashima Muhammad Nordin, Founder, Art Manager to Art Jamila Gallery, Selangor, Malaysia, and to all participants from Simio member countries. On behalf of Simio Sen, it is my pleasure to welcome all of you to today's webinar, Elevating the Talent and Potential for Students with Disabilities Through Arts and Culture. I would like to congratulate all of you for your interest in joining today's webinar. Thank you for your virtual presence today. For your information, it is ingrained in Simeon's roles to promote teachers' capacity building, increase awareness, and foster collaborative efforts among countries, institutions, and non-profit organizations 
for the benefit of the special education community. This time around, Simiusen aims to raise awareness on the special talent in arts and culture among students with disabilities. This effort is to enhance and open up the opportunities for students with disabilities to participate in arts and culture activities at the highest level. A collaborative effort among teachers, parents, art administrators, and non-profit organizations like talents agencies is needed to support the aspirations of special needs students in performing arts and culture. Today's webinar is so special. I am grateful and delighted to have six experienced speakers with us today. Though they have different backgrounds, they share the same goal to uplift students with disabilities who have talent and potential in arts and culture. I am sure that knowledge sharing sessions later will open your mind and give insights on identifying and supporting special needs students' talent and potential in arts and culture. Ladies and gentlemen, I do believe if the educators and parents can identify and groom their children's talent and potential at an early age, we can bring our children to a whole new level of success. However, first things first, the art administrators or teachers must improve access to arts and culture education so that the students will be more equipped to express their talent. This is to give the students courage to showcase their talent and potential. As Gavin Newsom once said, an arts education helps build academic skills and increase academic performance while also providing alternative opportunities to reward the skills of children who learn differently. Colin Ng, a visually impaired musician from Malaysia, and Azaria Tan, a hearing impaired pianist from Singapore, are individuals who have achieved greatness in arts and culture field at a young age. By looking at their current achievement, it is proven that everything is possible. With the right guidance, high motivation and aspiration, we can bring special needs students to go above and beyond. To all participants, I hope that this webinar will enlighten you with new perspective and knowledge on upbringing students with disabilities, talent and potential to a higher level. I will end my speech with a quote, your present circumstances don't determine where you can go, they merely determine where you start. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Dr. Hanani, for your inspiring remarks. Next, we will have a quick photo session and everyone, please turn on your camera. On my count, one, two, three, smile. Another take, again. One, two, three, say cheese. We will take a freestyle photo. One, two, three.
Another freestyle. Last one. Smile, everyone. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Now, allow me to share the briefing for today's webinar. Participants are strongly encouraged to mute their microphone during webinar and only unmuted when being asked by moderator or speaker. Due to time limitation, the moderator will only choose a few, a few questions for the speaker to answer. Therefore, we highly encourage that you wait until the speaker has completed their presentation in case the answer to your inquiries have already been mentioned during the presentation. The link to the evaluation form will be shared via chat box during the webinar. Webinar certificate will only be sent to participants who have completed their evaluation question through your email that has been registered within 14 working days. If you need further assistance, please email us at webinar at simiasen.org. Moving on now, I would like to introduce our moderator to take over today's session. Madam Suhaila Muhammad is the program associate of Simeo Sen based in Malacca, Malaysia. Her roles, among others, are to assist and coordinate capacity building program for special education teachers across the 11 Simeo member countries. Apart from that, she is also a postgraduate student in special education at University of Malaya and the president of the University of Malaya UNESCO Club. She is also an avid volunteer for Fan Disabilities Football Malaysia and a vice president of Frame Football Association Malaysia involving children with cerebral palsy. Now, it is our greatest pleasure to welcome Madam Suhaila Muhammad. Madam Suhaila, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Harisha, for the very kind introduction. I'm Suhaila Muhammad, and I am absolutely thrilled to be the moderator for today's webinar with a topic definitely close to my heart, arts and culture. So back in my school years, and even when I was in the university, I have always been actively participating in drama, theater, dancing, singing, you name it, everything under the sun, which was definitely had provided me with the platform to build up my self-confidence, self-esteem, as well as a great way for me to show, socialize with so many people out there. But what about the opportunities for the community with special needs? Are they given the trust and chance to showcase their potential and talent for the whole world to see? Do people trust them to perform in public? Or to begin with, do people in general even think that the community with special needs even have the talent and potential in them? Dear respected participants, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, this webinar is aimed at identifying arts and culture from four different countries in the Southeast Asia region, Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines, and Indonesia, and how teachers, parents, and students themselves may understand their significant roles in identifying exclusion and barriers to participation within society. These include music, performing arts, dancing, painting, which will be presented by the highly dedicated teachers for their students in exploring and consequently elevating the potential of their students in arts and culture. We need to remove the stigma. And today, we are fortunate to have four distinguished speakers from Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines, and Indonesia who have been dedicating their time and effort in elevating their talent and potential of their students through arts and culture. They are Mr. Stephanus Lucas, music teacher for, for students with special education, 
needs from SKPK Tuaran Sabah Malaysia. Mr. Dede Suprianto, teacher trainer from Ministry of Education, Culture and Research Indonesia. Mr. Nuten Surimpeng, orchestra coordinator for the Thai Blind Symphony Orchestra Thailand. And we have Assistant Professor Al Shamil Brian Barrera Aripudin from University of Southeastern Philippines. And we will also feature two parents for today's webinar who are Madam Heng Yok Wui, the President of Teacher Association SKPK Tuaran Sabah, Malaysia, and Associate Professor Architect Noha Shima Muhammad Nordin from Art Jamila Gallery, Malaysia. For students or community with disabilities, arts and culture defined here as acting, singing, music, crafts, paint or dance can be an avenue for both inclusion and empowerment. Speakers, are you ready to start the session? Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my greatest honor to invite a special educational needs teacher from Malaysia, Mr. Stephanus Lucas, to talk about the arts and culture from the local context of Tuaran Sabah, Malaysia. Mr. Stephanus, for five minutes, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, moderator. Yes, Kopi Sanangan Gawi is mean. Hello, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Yes, as I mentioned, I'm a music teacher in uh, Tuaran Special Education National School in Sabah. So why arts and culture important to students with disability? Or the arts and culture just for the normal people or normal students? No, uh, as I started being posted here, I started working in this school, I have no background in special education. I have background in music education. But when I'm coming in this school, I see their passion, their love in arts, in any performance. They are very passionate, uh, they are very love to be part in performance in any arts and culture. That's why I say today to all my friends, teachers, art and culture is very important to be teach with, for our students with disability. If not us, as a teacher, as a parent, as community, or any of us, our role, who else to teach or to share or to, 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 uh, to, to give a, a learning session to the student with uh, disability. That's why it's very important us as a teacher or as a parents or a community to share them, our arts, our culture. We've been blessed in Malaysia or in Southeast uh, Asia country. We've been blessed with our rich culture and arts. Malaysia itself, not only we have Malay, Chinese or Indian, but we have in Orang Asli, like, and we have the Sabahan uh, culture and Sarawak. We have Bidayu, we have Dusun. And in our school, in my school, we have multicultural students, not only one ethnic. That's why I share everything to them. So, because a uh, student with disability, they have right to learn, to know, to understand, to practice the arts and culture. It doesn't mean they have disability, they don't have right to learn arts and culture. They have, they are same with us, same with the normal students. So in this school, what I have done, uh, I'm start small. When you want to start something, you want to do the arts and culture in your school, start small, start what you have. I've been blessed this school, the previous teacher have done amazing job, amazing work. Uh, Madam Luciana, Mr. Zaini, and Mr. Wong, and all of them, they already started this school with the traditional music instrument. So when I'm coming to this school, I started what they have uh, started. So I start small. 
I start from the music class. So to my uh, fellow friends, start from your music, uh, start from your, uh, start from small and aim or plan bigger. So in 2016, I asked a group of my students, I asked them, you want to perform or you want to join any uh, international level competition? Yeah, they raised their hand and then they say, yes, we won. So I see they are very patient and they love to be part in any arts, in any culture. So I started in my music class, I started doing, uh, we are doing, uh, we are learning uh, musical elements and I combine with the arts and culture, like the movement of the, uh, the dance of the, our, our own culture, like the, the movement of the the Malay dance, like Borea, like, uh, like Zapin, Joget, they listen to the music and then they move. So we start small. So when we already, uh, and uh, one thing and I want to share also, start early as we can. So we need to start at the early stage or in the year one as, uh, as we can. So what we can do, we start small, like we, we share the music that we have. So we have our own music, like in Sabah, we have the Kadazan Dusun uh, music elements, the Murut one, the Bajau one, Bugis, and then I combine with the Malay, the Chinese, and then the Indian, and then the Orang Asli. So they have the experience. So when they have the experience, then I ask them to perform and uh, to ask them to join any competition. So I ask them, uh, they, they already have the experience. They already heard the sound of uh, our own music, the, how the rhythm, how the sound look like. So they already have experience and it's easy to them to practice in playing instrument. So, so my uh, fellow friends, don't think because they have this ability, we cannot share with them with our, our arts and culture. Because what I say, we need to see their ability, their possibility and their strength, their strength, the way that they can uh, do by their own. So just give them uh, play, just give them a, you just give them a freedom to see what they can do. In my music class, what I'm doing, I, I ask them to explore the, all the music instrument at first to see where they uh, find more compatible. Because we know uh, students with disability, especially in learning disability, students with learning disability, some of them, they don't like uh, this kind of sound. Uh, this kind of instrument, it's okay. We just give them uh, freedom to explore what uh, they can see, what they can have in the music classroom. So uh, as I share with you all, when my student explore and then I see which their potential, some of the student like, uh, like to have uh, uh, playing uh, only good and playing uh, rhythm. So I give them chance to playing a rhythm. So what I want to share with you all, start small and or plan big and focus on ability rather than disability and belief. Students with disability have right to learn arts and culture. So I give back to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stephanus, for the great insight. It is absolutely fantastic to know that all students from diverse ethnicity from your school are actively exposed to various activities. And I totally agree with your advice to start early and start small and move bigger from there. But most importantly, start small to share the passion and the music elements to focus on the ability rather than disability. So thank you, Mr. Stephanus. And I would also like to acknowledge our sign language interpreter, Mr. Lee, Miss Lee. Hello, Miss Lee. Okay, our sign language interpreter, Miss Lee is also here with us today. 
And I would also like to take this opportunity to um, thank the ICT team, Mr. Shabil, Mr. Eddie, Mr. Ashraf, and from training, Mr. Ikram and Pomastura from behind the scene. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for making it happen. Okay, now, without further ado, I would like to welcome our next speaker from Indonesia, Mr. Dedi Suprianto. He's a teacher trainer from Ministry of Education, Culture and Research Indonesia to talk about arts and culture from the local context of Indonesia. Bapak Dede, for five minutes, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Suhaila. Suhaila, sorry. Okay, uh, is my voice clear enough? Uh, yes, okay. yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, thank you, Ms. Suhaila. And it's, uh, it's an honor for me to, uh, to be here to share uh, we do uh, all of my uh, uh, experience and also uh, the story from uh, the teachers that I'm uh, working with as a trainer. So uh, talking about Indonesia, because we have a uh, first of diversity of culture and arts. Uh, I will try to cover uh, some regions in Indonesia. Uh, among the islands, we have very own characteristics, which is different among others. Then uh, folklore, in some province, uh, can you, next slide please, okay. Folklore in some province are very strong uh, and continue being taught generation by two generation. Schools introduce local wisdom as a form of cultural preservation by making it as an inspiration for works of arts and culture. For example, in South Sumatra, they are known the tale of the origin uh, of Kamaro Island, which tells about the love of a Chinese merchant and a native daughter of Palembang. The story appointed as a body painting made by the students in special school in Palembang. Also, the story uh, of Reo Ponorogo, uh, which comes from uh, Bantaring Kingdom in uh, East Java, and also the student in Yogyakarta making mass painting that represent the evil and the evil and good character in a school drama. Religious services and community ceremonies are also part of daily life in some people in Indonesia. In South Sumatra, some students are involved in welcome dance in schools and other government events. And also in Bali, students learn to make and decorate boxes for some uh, offerings box uh, to the God during the religious ceremonies. And natural resources also as an inspiration in art. Student in Padang, West Sumatra did a uh, popular song and movement with the theme of the mitigation. mitigation. This theme was chosen because this area is prone to disaster. So the teachers innovate to create interesting and easy to understand information about equal safety to the children. So uh, art and sculpture is very uh, rich in uh, our country. But we find some challenges that emerge in some region in Indonesia in the film arts and culture in uh, some student. Even though we believe that, uh, as the director said, that we have to be optimist, but we find the challenge is very, uh, very big and uh, really uh, difficult in some schools. Next, please. First challenge is the lack of skilled staff. We need more teachers like uh, Mr. Stephanus in Indonesia, actually. Uh, we found there is people teachers uh, who had arts and culture background in some schools. Some students are hard to find the right teacher like the winner of painting competition on this photo. She was lucky to, she, she was lucky to have uh, Mr. Paino who know the challenge and how to teach her so she can become the winner of the competition. Some schools also have limited funds to have quality equipment and resources so that so students sometimes learn and practice with cheap resources so that it affects, affects the quality of work produced and there is something sometimes lack of support from stakeholders to solve this issue as well. 
some students who have ex expertise in art skills like dancing girls on this photo are not continue to expand their talents when they graduated because they had less support to do art as their primary occupation. So the reality is sometimes so, most of our parents are not really supported to uh, their children when they uh, choose to being an artist. And also some parents still see the jobs in the arts and culture are less promising. They prefer their children to work in the office. So they are less supportive to their children when start to do work in this field. Like the girls on this photo who have talent in painting and coloring are less supported by the parents. But even though there are some challenges, we still believe that there will be a solution for this uh, challenge. Okay. I think that's all for this session, Ms. Sahila. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Didi. Um, loving the colorful arts and culture shared in your slides, they are absolutely captivating. And it is great to know how disaster like earthquake can be an inspiration to performing arts. So great job to teachers who have turned it into something positive and beneficial for the students. And also thank you, Mr. Dede, for sharing the challenges faced in your region. The lack of skill staff, um, artist is the last favorite job, resource and support. I think these are all, and we are hoping that this webinar can be an eye opening and raise more awareness that more students with disabilities can be involved and their talents can be showcased globally uh, through arts and culture. So thank you, Mr. Dede, for the great sharing. Now, without further ado, uh, all the way from Thailand, Saudi Ka, Mr. Nutin Surin, Nutan Surin Peng. Saudi Ka, thank you, Mr. Um, Sahira. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nathan Surin Peng from Thailand. I am a music volunteer teacher, coordinator of the band music arranger for the Thai Play Symphony Orchestra in Thailand. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank for inviting me as a part of this project to share uh, my students' talent and abilities. And I also would like to share about my experience with the blind students and what was going on in Thailand before the pandemic, because uh, for now we have to stop a while. Uh, okay, let me, sense, let me share some slides. Okay, Madam Suhaila, can you see it? Yeah. Yes, Ka, can see your slide. Uh, okay, there is an orchestra in Thailand made up of young musicians aged between 9 and 18 years old who are blind, visually, and visually impaired, and or multiple disabled. This band is called Thai Blind Symphony Orchestra, conducted by my friend, the guy in the middle, and directed uh, by Ku Kron Kanok Sivong, the director of the Christian Foundation for the Blind in Thailand. She is a big support for us. In this picture, she gave a big speech and big support for her sons and her daughter before performing on the stage. And the main objective of this project, of course, we want to improve the students' value skill like IQ, EQ, or living in a big world skill, or working as a team skill by using the music as a media. We also want to improve the life quality of the students as a professional musicians. You know, right, that uh, there are a lot of backup musicians uh, in the street, and some of them are blind, and we want them to have a better life as a musician. And this is uh, the same guy. So, okay, uh, from street to stairs, something like this. And uh, the objective is also to develop a student behavior. Uh, some of the students are their press, their eyes. I show you. Some students they press their eye like this. Uh, cause they said that they felt inchy inside the eye, so they had to scratch like this. And of oh, some of students, they shake the body like this all the time. We think that 
uh, we could improve student behavior to a better way uh, because they will have to concentrate on playing instead of doing something else. Uh, they will have to concentrate like this is the first finger. They have to do like this. They have to do like this. They have to do like this instead of doing something like this. Okay, uh, that is all the local context uh, of arts and culture for Thailand. Thank you, Kapunka, Mr. Nuten, for the great sharing from street to stage. I like that concept. And I'm sure there are more, more people out there, more students, community specialists who are absolutely talented. And we hope that they will be given the trust and opportunities for them to showcase their talent and potential in arts and culture. I love what you're doing, Mr. Nuten. I hope you keep doing it. Um, is there a link that you can share a uh, video for uh, of them performing? If you have, can you please share in the chat box so that um, the other participants here can also enjoy the performance of these students. Thank you so much from Thailand. Okay, now please welcome all the way from Philippines. Kamusta Assistant Professor Ashame Brian Barrera Aripudin. Yes, mabuhay. mabuhay. Uh, buntag, no? Assalamu alaikum and buenas dias Hello. to all the people around the world. Okay, so in my context in elevating culture and the arts, I'd like to focus on the art of really teaching music and the arts to students with special needs. So next slide, please. I am very privileged to work with four major institutions around the Philippines. My first workplace was Ateneo Zamboanga, where I experienced working with the Center for Visual and Performing Arts, okay, or the CPVA. And then, of course, in, in uh, along that way, I also worked with uh, Western Mindanao State University. When I was uh, working as a conductor for the UP Pharmacy Junior Ambassadors of Music, we also had ministries that we also help children with uh, special needs, no? And of course, my uh, recent workplace, University of Southeastern Philippines, where I believe and I have really seen active activities, most especially from my colleagues in the special needs education department. Next slide, please. So in my experience as a music teacher, I have performed and also witnessed these activities that were conducted uh, in the span of a decade. First was, of course, the recital, wherein it was conducted by the Center for Visual and Performing Arts, followed by a silent chords concert. This was actually a concert where, where not only the deaf and mute were performing, but even the blind, where I myself performed together with them. And that experience was truly reaching. And they also have these annual activities such as Camp Feb E Big and Camp Pag Asa, the Happy Walk Kids Fun Day. And of course, uh, during the pandemic, uh, being a former deputy director of the University of Southeastern Philippines for Culture and the Arts, we had conducted a virtual concert as a tribute for the deaf and mute during the pandemic. And the virtual funding, which was actually con conducted by my colleague, Ms. Sheila C. Uh, Llorando, yesterday in uh, Yusef Tagum campus. Next slide, please. So as a music teacher, it was never a hindrance in Mindanao. It was never a hindrance for us to work or to, to do mainstreaming with special children. Um, when I had this experience of uh, teaching voice lessons for students, most especially at young age, maybe around 7 to 12, I guess, if I remember well, there are parents who really would like to try or uh, who attempt no, in, in sharing or or let's say enrolling their students in this particular program and at first i was hesitant because i was not yet that well versed in dealing with special children but you know with my exposure in various uh, performances together with children with special needs i had these orientations already on how to do this so in achieving such program like this you really have to do culture or musicking that's the beauty of teaching music and arts you develop the culture that people will bind together regardless of any uh, description. Next slide, please. So in arriving to that kind of performance, we of course develop routines in our classroom. Routines that are not just easily done, but it has to be, you know, enhanced at the same time observed. No, you, you really have to make sure that when you do music with your students, it's not just about the art of entertaining or making them enjoying it, but also making them understand that music and the arts has a special role in their lives. Next slide, please. So, of course, 
well, having the kind of culture, that positive culture of reinforcing these talents, then everything will be successful. In fact, this little boy over here is one of the siblings of those children who, had, who have special needs. No? And it makes everyone feel involved, not just only the students with special needs, but even the parents and the community. So they really feel the essence of where their talents are going and how instrumental it can be in developing a sustainable relationship in the society. Next slide, please. And of course, beyond musicking in uh, culture and the arts, we also do a ministry. Like in this case, I'm not just dealing with uh, children with special needs here. I'm also serving together with my friends for those students who really have cancer. No, and of course, it's it's beyond just a. Uh, working with special needs but it's also a ministry that you develop you share your talent i also even tell this to my children to my students that it's really nice to do things altruistically for people we do this actually every december uh except long for for this past few uh years because of the pandemic but hopefully we will go back to this face-to-face -face kinds of activity next slide please Okay, so I would like to feature here two shellas, the two shellas of my life who inspired me really to work on this particular type of setup no, on dealing with students with special needs. Mom Shella here is an associate professor of Western Indiana State University. Her ability to create a sign language choral is very, very inspiring because what I admire about this professor is that she really involves the children, not just in classroom activities, but even in university-wide programs. No wonder children feel so empowered to share their talent, to really come up with activities that you know maximize their potential and they understand their role as well. Next slide, please. Next slide, sir. Okay, so this is an example of uh, what they call this, the concert entitled Silent Chords, where actually all sorts or all shades of students with special needs really involve their ways. No? And, they have learned so much about culture, not just about music, but really showcasing the talent and the art of dancing, singing, acting, and even doing role plays. They have showcased this, and regardless of their needs, and you know, this inspired me so much, even until now, no? that whatever in whatever thing that you do or whatever thing you would like to showcase with them you have to make them understand they have a, a larger role in saying or in showing how much instrumental they could be for the entire community next slide please and of course during the uh, start of the pandemic i am also very motivated by this teacher of ours here in the university she's actually from the uh, college of teacher education and technology in yusef tagum campus she empowered the role of sign language through music virtually when she had the concert entitled silent chords and recently they had activities that also have been conducted next slide please um by the university to really involve students with uh special needs next slide sir okay so before the pandemic and even up to now, up to the present time, the University of Southeastern Philippines being one of the premier ASEAN research universities in the uh, ASEAN region, they basically have uh, showcased a lot of uh, what they call this uh, activities that have been ongoing until now. And there are some implications I, I would like to share. Can you go to the slide that has the implications that they can ponder on, please? Thank you. Yeah, so that's that, that's the activity. Yes. So I think slide number four. Yes. Right? Ah. yes, yes, that's correct. Can you showcase all five already? Sure, okay. Yeah. Okay, so first is you really have to secure a nurturing environment. That's one thing that in my experience as a music teacher involving students with special needs, the ability of them learning fast or even uh, growing fast is because of this kind of environment. Now, the foremost consideration in teaching music and the arts is securing a nurturing environment. And of course, quality rehearsal really requires devotion. You, In order to understand their needs, you have to make sure that you are involved with their needs, that you, you walk with them along the way in, in, in sharing those things. Next point, please. Hello, point number three. Four and five, please. Mr. Eddie? Mr. Eddie, the next one, please. Yeah. 
yeah and of course in, in in this aspect you have what we call expression over perfection we don't really expect them to to be as perfect as much as possible but what we want them to do is to use music and the arts as their channel for expression no? to become more human and to be more connected with the environment and as a music teacher point number four is very very significant for me because non-musical goals are always as essential as musical goals in in developing the holistic growth of this learner and then of course like any teacher we should always remember this that we should not forget that they, they should enjoy what they are doing and they understand that this is of course for the welfare of of their own holistic development okay so that will be all for my end thank you so much thank you assistant professor ashami for the great sharing i am definitely motivated when you said the beauty of teaching arts and culture where people get together regardless of their background. It's not just about entertaining, but also to realize that music has a special role and functions in their life. And a very significant point, to channel their expressions. Thank you so much for that. Thank and you so much. Thank you. And to participants in Zoom, Facebook and YouTube, thank you for joining us. We look forward to your feedback and questions, which can be typed in the chat box. So uh, please state who the questions are addressed to. So later during the Q&A sessions, we will select the questions and read them to your chosen speaker. And when you, um, and Professor uh, Shamir, when you have the face-to-face -face activities, I hope to visit Philippines by then and watch the performance live. Okay, now we have listened to all four countries, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and Philippines. Moving on, the policies, and resources. Okay, policies provide guidance, consistency, accountability, um, efficiency, and clarity on how the inculcation of arts and culture for students with disabilities in each respective countries operate. So it defines the goals and provide guidance about how to achieve objectives as well as to provide uh, how to handle issues pertaining to art and cultures when they arise. So now, uh, without further delay, I would like to invite Mr. Stephanus Lucas again to talk about the policy and resources from Sabah, Malaysia. Mr. Stephanus, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yes, again, uh, just to want to highlight in Malaysia, we are familiar with Pulang Pembangunan Pendidikan Malaysia or in English, Malaysia Education Blueprint 2013 and 2025. So in this uh, program, they have uh, one element that is our uh, one element that related to the uh, student with disability inclusive education program. So when they're doing this, uh, when they are uh, implementing this uh, program, there's more platform and more uh, opportunity for our student with disability to involve any activities or program that are uh, related to arts and culture. That's, uh, that's why we see a lot of uh, uh, competition that uh, they invite uh, our student with disability to, to join. So another thing that uh, we familiar is with the music education syllabus in, in primary or secondary school. We see that the, in the uh, syllabus, uh, we find out that they include uh, our arts and culture. They not only learn music or uh, theoretical uh, only, but they also have uh, something like uh, arts, like the other uh, culture from uh, the Malay group, the Chinese group, Indian group, or in the Sabah and Sarawak uh, culture. So when we see this, it's a very uh, good resource for us as a music teacher, as a, a teacher who are try to teach arts and culture with our student with disability. So, but one thing that I found that uh, the challenge that I found as a music teacher when I'm uh, teaching, when I teach with student with disability, we are lack of resource, like how to teach or how to start. So I found that, that many teachers, many friends, they will ask me how to teach uh, like uh, instrument. I'm teaching with visual impairment students how to teach uh, Anglong, uh, example, or how to teach them to play uh, the, the instrument. So this kind of thing that I found that uh, biggest challenge uh, as a teacher who are trying to uh, teach arts and culture in Malaysia. 
So what we can do is we need to have collaboration each other. So that's why I'm not good in dance. I'm good in playing instrument, but I'm not good in dance. So I will ask another teacher who are very good in dance to share and teach uh, with uh, my students. So uh, if we don't have in school, we find in another outside, outside in our school. So we can go find uh, collaboration with the parents or the NGO or with the university or any parties that are uh, related that we want to do or we want to share with our students. So uh, that's, the, that's the thing. We have the resource uh, because the, the, the Minister of Education already created the, the Malaysian Education Blueprint and then in the syllabus also we have the arts and culture. But the problem is uh, some of us, we don't have the knowledge how to uh, teach. Or student. So, like I say, like I mentioned before, start small. Start what you have. In my school, I have the instrument. So, I'm using all the traditional instrument to uh, to start it. So, so I start with uh, uh, create uh, uh, to create a group of students playing an instrument. So they uh, we start in the school, and then after that, uh, I ask them or I bring them to join any competition in any level. So from there, we start small and then going to uh, next level. So that's why we need uh, each other. It's not only me, but it's, we need uh, collaboration with other people so that the benefits will be to the student with our student with disability. Because uh, me alone, we, I cannot do uh, many things. It's very limited. Uh, that's why I need uh, people. That's why I need collaboration. So uh, from that, uh, we can create future or something a bigger things for my uh, student. So this thing that I have done in my school or in my uh, with my student with disability, uh, we have already with the minister uh, education already create something and then we have the uh, the syllabus the the all the panduan and then what we need we try to apply it if we cannot apply it by ourselves we try uh, to get help with others so that's the thing that i did in my school or with my student mm -hmm. yeah i give back to the moderator thank you Thank you, Mr. Stephanus, for the great insight. It is a great resource highlighted where all arts and culture here in Malaysia uh, are being um, highlighted there, like uh, the Malay, Chinese, Indian, even uh, uh, orang asli performance. So thank you for that. And great suggestion on the collaboration among teachers to outsource from NGO, parents, university students to also educate and approach students with disabilities in arts and culture. Yes, I totally agree. Dream, a uh, teamwork makes the dream work. So thank you for that, Mr. Stephanus. Now, please welcome Mr. Dede to talk about the policy and resources in Indonesia. Mr. Dede. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Suhaila. So, uh, there's uh, some similar actually uh, what's happened in Indonesia and uh, Malaysia. Uh, so in uh, our national curriculum, uh, we currently use the 2013 uh, curriculum. The arts and culture uh, already have uh, the standard of competency uh, for the students uh, from elementary to uh, high school, like high school level. And also uh, we have like in uh, integration between arts and culture lesson with the elective skills program and as well as embedded to other subjects. So not just uh, separate uh, on the arts and culture, but also embedded to other uh, subject matter. For example, the dancing are embedded with makeup artist skill subjects and also uh, song embedded with uh, like, um, uh, literacy and also language uh, subject matter. 
Then arts and culture are also applied in uh, intracurricular, co-curricular, and extracurricular in schools. And our uh, current policy also mandates the formation of student character to the Pancasila student profile framework, which are one of the purple, uh, namely the global diversity, in which the students are directed to respect differences and cultures uh, with other uh, uh, races. Like, similar with Malaysia, we have like uh, Malayu, Sumatra, Japanese, Sundanese, Papua, Sulawesi, so uh, we want the the uh, the students are really uh, aware about the diversity and they respect each other. And also uh, we want to encourage the student to preserve the culture uh, as early as possible. And uh, arts, arts and culture in Indonesia have been so uh, since the Dutch colonization, which uh, at first it was not a compulsory subject, then continue to grow until now with various changes in terms and content that must be taught in the schools. And uh, each schools must conduct and conduct an initial assessment to determine the child talents and interests in academics, including artistic, artistic and cultural. This assessment is carried out continuously to that each student uh, progress is known by the teachers. And also uh, the assessment uh, will be uh, determined uh, what modification that teacher needs to do for the student to, uh, to align with the national standards. And also to encourage the achievement, achievement and actualization in arts or culture, exhibition and competition are held in uh, many stages from the scope of uh, school between students uh, in schools to the regional and national scope. For instance, in Yogyakarta province, education agency, there was held the regular art workshop and exhibition uh, to promote the passion and skills of students in arts and culture. Next, please. And last year, we uh, established the Pusat Prestasi Nasional or Center of National Achievement. This institution creates student achievement in various fields, including arts and culture. And also the heritage of nature and man-made becomes the infinite inheritance of arts and culture in Indonesia. For example, the culture of hospitality of the Indonesian people can be seen from the welcome dance in almost various regions. One of which in South Sumatra is performed by the students and also there's some, uh, there's many, many uh, welcome dance like in, in Bali, or in uh, Yogyakarta and also in uh, Sulawesi. Like uh, what Stephanus, Mr. Stefanus said about collaboration, so uh, we also encourage some schools to uh, making a partnership with uh, other uh, institutions, such as tourism uh, agency and hotels that involve the student to perform, to perform at the event that help in their uh, premises. Like for uh, the example, like uh, the student in Bali, they uh, perform in the hotel uh, in Denpasa. And also this collaboration also like uh, open the opportunities for the school uh, and student to bridge their artistic uh, and cultural skills as a livelihood after the student graduate. Another example, student in Garut, West Java, received their special food, color, uh, it's called Burayot, by collaboration with various institutions to uh, distribute their products, both direct and online sales. Some students also benefited from supportive community, parents, and institutions. For example, this phantom and winner have recommendation to get higher education because of his skills in arts. The schools also encourage him to be a teacher in his alma mater after he graduated from the university. So I'm really happy to hear about this story. Thank you, Ms. Suhaila. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Dedi. Uh, to talk about the, the policy and resources there in Indonesia, loving the beautiful cultures of Indonesia. I'm always so mesmerized by the input there. And yeah, congratulations to the pantomime winner. 
hopefully yeah, the collaboration can also extend more opportunities after they graduated and open doors to uh, become independent, right? to have independent life and to also encourage life skills for them. So thank you for that uh, sharing, Mr. Dede. Now please welcome Mr. Nutan Surin Peng from Thailand. Thank you, Madam Suhaila. Okay. Uh, for Thailand, we start by recruit the members from five different private schools, different provinces. Uh, students mostly are from northeastern part of Thailand, so they didn't meet each other every day. Sometimes only one time a week, uh, one time a month, I'm sorry. And that was quite a big problem at first, because as a musician, we need to practice continuously, not just uh, one time uh, a month. For black students, they even need more time than good eyes people because they can't see. Anyway, we have no choice because the students live quite far from each other. Uh, sometimes it takes like uh, 12 hours for transportation. And um, for volunteer teacher as well, mostly they live in Bangkok. There is no local music teacher in the student province, so the student cannot practice alone. They waited for us to teach and lead the rehearsal. At the beginning of the project was quite uh, troublesome for us, but it's getting better later when we have a senior student that could lead the rehearsal. As you can see, the big guys is a senior student and yeah, they help us a lot. Okay, the best options for us is to bring students from different places to one place. We don't have enough volunteer teachers to go every school, so we end up finding the place in the middle between each school and Bangkok. Mostly, we build up a music camp at the Lopuri province. It's located uh, in the central of Thailand. For the teaching process, uh, first, we have to translate normal sheet music into a braille sheet music, and my friend, that I showed you before he did it. All of the students need to read uh, Braille, cheese music, and most importantly, they have to remember the music. Sometimes I have to play uh, in the piano and sing the notes for them again and again until they can remember. And sometimes uh, in one camp, they have to remember the music up to 20 pieces that was quite a big number, not only for students, but for me as well, because I have to teach. And, okay, at first, we need to teach person in person because they couldn't see. They need to know how to play, how to grab an instrument, how to move hand position, shoulder position. That's why I told you that we need a lot of uh, volunteer teachers because we need to teach person in person like this okay and there were more some challenges like uh, normally we don't have much time to rehearse sometimes the students cannot remember the whole music for me as a music arranger i have to simplify the music score and keeping the same material repeat and repeat again it sounds quite boring sometimes but it works for my students However, if we have enough time to rehearse, which is not quite often, then the student can play normal music arrangement. And some problem, right? We have some problem, like uh, some students sometimes just uh, shut down themselves. Maybe they got too much information. They just uh, sit still, no any response or consciousness. They could not hear anything. At the moment, I didn't uh, really know what to do. But I had to stop the lessons and let my student rest. And they will be able to communicate again maybe uh, after 10 minutes. Then we have to let them rest for a day or half a day. And we also have some uh, problem like a physical issue. Like, uh, I'll show you. Some student there could have uh, extend their finger stick together and so I have to allow my student to move their fingers freely as they wish as long as uh, it's still in tune and sound good 
because uh, I could not do anything about their body. I used to talk to the physical therapist about this issue as well, but it's gonna be take some big time or surgery if needed, and also some big money. Mm -hmm. And however, we are so lucky to have uh, we are so lucky to have such a patient student and there was student and trying student as well as my college. Yeah. They have a good wow. view for students. Yeah, they help us everything. We even need to sleep in the tent like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to work like from eight in the morning until 10 in the evening without any complaint from both my college and my students. Okay, that's all for this part. Okay, thank you, Mr. Newton, for the great sharing. My hats off to you and your team for such amazing patience, support, sacrifice towards the students to repeat the music notes again and again for them. So, yeah, that's a wonderful effort from you. Uh, and you mentioned that you need more volunteer teachers. Uh, how can the teachers, in, perhaps if there are teachers here from Thailand who are uh, joining this uh, webinar, they can get in touch with you to become volunteers uh, for your orchestra. So you can leave yes, like, a sure. link. Yeah, leave a link yeah, for them to get in touch with you, like maybe email or something. So they can... Okay, sure. Thank you so much for that. Okay, now uh, from Philippines, uh, Assistant Professor Aisha Mir Brian, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you so much. Um, on our context, basically, uh, we have two strong organizations in the university that help in the uh, promotion of, say, for example, music and the arts in the virtual aspect. Um, can we show slide number 14? Okay. Oh, yeah, this is slide 14, uh, Assistant Professor. Oh, I mean the previous one, the one that has the two seals. Ah, uh, you mean 13 or 12? Yes. Okay, Mr. Eddie, can you see slide 13 and or 12 for Professor Al Shamir? Okay, so we have, uh, of course, the uh, USPED or the United Special Education Students Organization here in Abrero Campus. And we also have the USEP SPED advocates in the uh, uh, Tagum Campus. And these two organizations are basically strong organizations in the university that really promote the advocacy of mainstreaming or involving the students, not just the SPED, not just the faculty, and not just the community around the USEP, but as well as the community outside our stakeholders. In fact, uh, recently, just yesterday, um, I know the students together with their teachers in the Tagum campus conducted a virtual fun day. And these were actually the involvement of representatives from the indigenous people's community, the deaf community, the LGBTQ community, and as well as the various department heads that have really developed uh, a cohort together with the special needs department, as well as certain scholars and representatives from the various sectors in the community. And their aim is basically to uh, not just have fun day in, in the aspect of enjoyment, but to remind people that they are they are connecting with people with special needs. And, and it was during that event that they have also showcased uh, various talents and various, uh, what do you call this, um, performances that have also linked their uh, particular uh, aspects. And one example of that was already like a slide I showed a while ago where in there was this boy who took part in uh, doing the sign language for the prayer. And if, even in our uh, daily flag ceremony, we also have Professor Mariche Silianto who also showcase the sign language of the Philippine National Anthem. Um, in our university, the arts and music is still growing, but what I like about it is that people are getting more and more, and more sensible and aware about it. And the beauty of that is, you know, people learn to appreciate the function of Thank you, people with special needs, okay? And at the same time, what they also can 
uh, make us understand is that they can really cater to immediate needs, not just in in informal uh, context, but even in formal performances or formal programs. So if there's one thing that uh, I should really connote in the local resources, it is assured that in our uh, context here in the Philippines, most especially here in Mindanao, the mode of communication from dealing with our clientele is very, very strong because of our uh, strong cohort with our stakeholders. And of course, the intervention or the, de the designing of activities is also uh, meeting the targets that we want in order for us to, you know, collaborate with various stakeholders in order for us to create a sustainable relationship with them. And hopefully, when, you know, the time comes that, like I said, if the pandemic ends, we would even flourish all these activities to unite all our talented students once again. So that will be all on my aspect. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Assistant Professor Al Shamir. So resources are definitely important for teachers uh, of special education globally as it assists them in utilizing uh, to reach the objectives and aims, uh, particularly for the purpose of introducing encouraging and consequently elevating the talent and potential of their students through arts and culture. Now, all teachers understand the significance of planning for their students because there is a saying that goes, the one without plan becomes a victim of circumstances. It is therefore pivotal for teachers to know the directions to where they are heading with their endeavor and know how to get there. So one of the best tools in accomplishing this is definitely to have a very good plan. So let us here again uh, welcome our esteemed speakers uh, to share with us what are their future plans for your students. So Mr. Stephanus, the floor is yours. Okay, can you hear my, my voice? Yes, yes thank Mr. you. Stephanus. Yeah, okay. So my future plan. So like just now, Mr. Nadan shared with us, he alone cannot do. I'm also involved in students with visual environment. We need more volunteer, we need more help. So in my next future plan, I need more collaboration, not only for my schools, for my benefits of my students, but to other school or to, or to other students with disability in all Malaysia. So I can give them uh, like uh, I'm doing collaboration uh, like my school. Uh, right now we are doing a collaboration with UITM, University Technology Mara. So they have the expertise, they have the, uh, the things, they know what to do. So I ask them to teach me or to share with my students. So another thing, I'm a part of Malaysian Association for Music Education in Malaysia. So uh, I can find help from them. So for next uh, plan, it's more collaboration. So I hope in uh, to my fellow uh, friends, teachers in Malaysia, don't afraid to make collaboration with other school, with other NGO, with other university. Just do for benefits of your students, for benefit of our students. So. Uh, we also can do a collaboration. Uh, I also am uh, in planning to do more collaboration with other school uh, uh, to guide them or to teach how to start. Because I believe that if the student with disability given right opportunity platform, they will be they can be success even in the areas of arts and culture. Just uh, like I've been proved with my students. They've been uh, involved and won many uh, competition level, even in the international level. So they can. So I believe your student also can. So another uh, next planning, uh, my, my future planning is uh, to start uh, to have the continuous program with my student. Now I'm teaching in primary uh, school. So after they finish the primary school, in the secondary school, what going to uh, happen? or they just learn in the primary and then stop. No, I planning to do like a long-term program. So that's why I need collaboration in primary school and then they're going to secondary and then they're going to university level. So I need to see what I can do 
uh, I started with my student. Right now, I started. So after they finish their primary school, what things that I can do for them in the areas of arts and culture. So I'm already planning with a group of students. Uh, next year, they will go into secondary school, uh, the, the Sekolah Menengah. So what I'm doing, I'm planning with them any competition or any uh, program involved in arts and culture, I will bring them. So I will help, uh, I will guide them in the help and collaboration with teacher in, uh, in their secondary school. So this is what I'm, I'm trying to do in next uh, future because I don't want, they only learn in primary and then stop. I need them have the continuous things of program knowledge in the arts and uh, in the arts and culture. That's the thing that I'm trying to do. So uh, another things in future also, I'm trying to involve as many as can with my student to involve a competition in any level. So I give them opportunity to, uh, to perform or to join any competition so that it's not only gain knowledge in playing or in uh, applying in arts and culture like playing instrument, but also to gain their self confidence. Because we, uh, as, as we know, students with disability, they are very shy. So through this uh, kind of things, by involved in competition, in any performance, any level, it's help the student gain their confidence, their level confidence. So they will, uh, they will have uh, thinking or they will think that they are part of us. Because right now, because of disability, they feel like they are different world. No, we, through this, uh, through this uh, involved in any competition or performance, they will feel like us because students with disability or not disability just same with us. So that's why we, um, uh, that's why I always say, um, focus on ability and disability. I hope in my uh, my uh, next future, the next planning will be more more happening and joy and the benefits uh, can uh, the student uh, my student can get the benefits and also uh, my aim also my 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 passion. I hope uh, this kind uh, this kind of thing can inspiring inspiring other school other teacher or other student with disability to start with the uh, involving in arts and culture to start like I say start small and end big that's it from me I say I give back to the moderator thank you. So this is the email address that uh, they can contact you because you mentioned that you need collaboration. You, you also need volunteers. So if they were they are interested, so this is the contact details, right, Mr. Stephanus? Okay. So uh, if you're interested to get yes, to know, yeah, this is my email, and then the chikustep.com is my uh, blog. Uh, you just uh, go find my Chiku step. I will share some tips or I will share my story with my student what we have gone through. So just check uh, this uh, website and my email. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stephanus. Okay, now, uh, Mr. Dede, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Ms. Uh, Sohela. So uh, for the future plan, there is uh, actually plenty of uh, future plan, but I try to um, uh, just cover a uh, uh, plan of uh, how we can uh, elevate the potency uh, and talent of arts and culture. So the ministry have been uh, identified uh, the issues in special education, especially about arts and culture uh, teachers in schools. So we have uh, developed the uh, roadmap how to improve the competency of arts and culture teachers, culture teachers, enhance the reward and uh, acknowledgement of teachers, as well as how uh, we uh, increase the number of uh, arts and culture teachers in schools. And uh, we will run the professional development in elective skills, includes us and expand the community of practice of this field. And we also want to uh, enhance the rewards 
for the uh, teachers, like uh, how we can uh, increase the, their income and also the status of recognition for the welfare of their work. In addition, uh, we also want to uh, close the gap uh, of ratio between uh, teachers and students. And uh, so we want to uh, recruit more uh, teachers of uh, arts and culture background. And then we want to like uh, spread them to the needed uh, schools in uh, among, among the areas in Indonesia. And uh, then we want to, uh, some uh, winners of the competition will be uh, involved in international trainings and events uh, arranged by uh, Pusat Prestasi Nasional uh, or a National Achievement uh, Center. For example, the winner of uh, this, uh, on this photo, the winner of body painting have been joined the training on uh, CDESCO International, and also we have some of the uh, winner of a comic strip that they uh, joined the training in Japan. And then uh, for students who have talent, who uh, talents have been recognized and become uh, the winner on a local and national uh, competition, they will be empower, empowered by the province to uh, provide them the scholarship and also a recommendation to continue their education to higher level. Some university have been uh, open to uh, artist students such as in Bandung and in uh, Jakarta. And then uh, we uh, also want, the, uh, want some schools and district education agency to develop the sustainable uh, partnership, like uh, Mr. Stefano said about collaboration so we want them to uh, more focus uh, about how to distribute, how to expand the uh, product and the performances of the students uh, with other uh, organization. Like for instance, the uh, poster competition winner uh, on this photo will be distributed the, uh, to other schools and government uh, agency about the poster of um, uh, earthquake uh, safety mitigation. And then some uh, local government will be more an knowledge the student who wins the competition to be the, ne uh, the next employee in their institution. For example, the national winner of uh, dancing on this photo become the employee in Bali Education Agency. So uh, we hope that this good practice will be imitated by other uh, local government. Uh, I think that's uh, that is the most of future plan that we want to uh, elevate the talent and potency uh, of our students in Indonesia. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Dede, for the great sharing. Again, uh, such amazing input you shared on the makeup, uh, body painting that shows that shows that there are actually many opportunities of arts that can be explored for the students. And yes, for the expansion of national winner to international training and competition, the sustainable partnership, business and industry. I think these are all great practice from Indonesia that can be, can be imitated by others as well. So thank you, Mr. Dede, for the sharing. Okay, now Mr. Nutan, the floor is yours, Mr. Nutan. Thank you, Madam Suhaila. Okay, in the future, after the pandemic, and we will continue using music to enhance the blind student life further. Uh, there was a plan that we want to do and we didn't finish yet. The Christian Foundation for the Blind in Thailand has a lot of blind schools all over Thailand, and we will recruit more volunteer teachers or contact to the music college and maybe ask for a good as music student who want to do an internship with us. And then we will send them to blind school instead of gathering by student to one place. We want to develop blind students in other regions, in other provinces all over Thailand as well, not just uh, one group in the northeastern part of Thailand. 
And if possible, we want to build up a music camp for the blind students from every part of Thailand. It's gonna be a big project, but uh, possible. And for the students who want to uh, study music in the college further, we will assist and encourage them. And finally, we will have a real bright teacher to teach music in the blind school. For now, we, are, we do have a lot of blind musicians, but uh, not, a, uh, not a teacher. We don't have a teacher yet. And if we have another teacher, both, uh, both blind teacher and volunteer teacher, we will add this kind of music activity into blind school curriculum because we felt that music could really help them in one way or another. For now, this activity is just like an activity for those who is interested, not for every blind student. And one last thing for us, we need a stage. <laughs> and we, we had an opportunity once in Hong Kong. It was a big impression for me and for students uh, entire their life because it is the first time of traveling abroad first time of uh, this big performance, first time of flying, first time of uh, trying foreign food, first time of everything. Most of my students, uh, they are poor, no money, they have no parents, uh, they are left behind. Uh, they couldn't, some of them uh, couldn't imagine even go to Bangkok, the capital city of Thailand, but they is the stage in Hong Kong. That was an unforgettable experience for my students and for me as well. At last and most importantly, we hope that we could have an opportunity to perform in your country, maybe Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, oh my god, I'm so excited, uh, to exchange knowledge and culture. Maybe we can exchange volunteer and yeah, we can share our, our knowledge for for disabled person okay and that's uh that is all of the future plan for now we hope we can get in touch uh with you i mean uh you you have shared your facebook here with the participants yep. so if there are any competitions that involve music for the blind yes please get in touch with uh mr newton here uh, what he's doing is such noble, your, you and your team. So yeah, keep it up. And we're, we're hoping uh, to get more performances by the students as well. Thank you so much yeah. for your great effort. Okay, now thank I would you. like to... Yeah, thank you. I would like to invite Mr. Uh, Pro Assistant Professor Ashamir. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you so much. On my aspect or in my context of, you know, the planning step, this is actually like true to all aspects, like not just, not just in the performance, not just in music education, but even for special education. First, you just really have to raise the level of family and community involvement, especially here in the context of the Philippines, that we know the uh, setup for this pandemic is really restricting many movements, especially for music and the arts. So what we encourage with our family members and the the members of the community is to really make sure that they show the support that each of the learner needs in order to be involved in music and the arts, regardless it is singing, dancing, or even uh, doing paintings or sketch and the like. And second point is that you really have to establish clearer goals. No, Whenever you do activities, you make sure that these goals have a direction on where we could showcase the avenues just like with the other countries um, be it on national or local or even you know in a university context you make sure that the talents are maximized in the correct avenue and, and they are not exploited also just to you know showcase that we have talents but it's really making people understand that in music and the arts we we highlight the role of the person, not just the talent. Like I said, it's it's really important to also make sure that they understand their role, even though it's non-musical at, at, at some point, okay? And then in choosing materials, I as a Kodai advocate as well in music teaching, I'm very particular with the selection of materials and I make sure that whenever I choose the music materials, they are really meeting the needs of the learners. And this is all the things that also music therapy would also encourage for our children with special needs. And for those who really have, uh, what do you call this, um, the, the zest on sharing 
their passion for teaching music because like i said here in the philippines mainstreaming is really not something that is difficult to do and you know the ability of the people here to understand and have a heart for our children with special needs is not that uh rare it's it's an abundant culture and that that uh, that particular movement is at least strong enough. And of course, like I said, routines are always essential to success. Whenever we do things or whenever we plan things, we make sure that there is really progress, like what uh, the previous speakers also said, like they really do constant communication, constant development, and even in fact, if they could request an extra time for practice and effort, it has to be also uh, delivered or met, no? the demand must be really raised well. And well, in, in a nutshell, basically in teaching music and the arts to uh, children with special needs, what really matters most is you have the heart for it. Like, uh, what was also mentioned, you focus on the ability, not the talent, because you, you have to understand how this ability could play its important role in order for you to know your roadmap in understanding the needs of your clients or your students or even your family members who have special needs. You have to know like at what potential can this be instrumental for the community. Okay, so uh, that's that's basically it for, for my part. I would just like to thank everyone for really sharing also their insights and their uh, understanding about it. And hopefully, like I said, when things will, uh, will be well here for us, especially, especially in Mindanao, particularly in Dava, we could also create more activities that could engage, especially our young children, especially in this pandemic. We know that most of the time they're just really in their houses because of the rules and regulations that we have here in our country. So that would be all on my end. Once again, salamat na marami. Mabuhay. Salamat, Assistant Professor Ashamir. Thank you so much for your great sharing. Um, yeah, I just want to say that um, we have listened to all of the great sharing from four countries, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and Philippines. All of your sharing are beneficial and truly eye-opening. And I'm uh, also uh, happy to see that uh, the participants here are connecting and engaging with our speakers here and hope for further collaboration as well. So please keep it up, participants. Get in touch with the speakers and see how you can collaborate and uh, you know uh, be become part of the arts and culture for the students. Okay, we have also received questions uh, for the speakers, which I will share the questions later during our Q&A in a short while after our special segment with the parents here today. Okay, now, most current theories stress the need for connections between families and schools. Within the framework of home-school connections, much of the specific debate and hope for change focuses on parents' involvement in their children's schooling and activities. So parents' involvement is in fact listed as a significant goal and target for educational uh, purposes, educational advancement and development. That said, today's webinar is even more meaningful with the presence of two wonderful parents whose children are actively involved in the development of arts and culture. They are Madam Heng Yok Wui, the president of Parent Teacher Association SKPK Tuaran Malaysia, and Associate Professor Architect Nohashima Muhammad Nordin from Art Jamila Gallery Malaysia. So first up, please welcome Madam Heng Yok Wui to share insights on her child's involvement in performing arts. Madam Hey, you have 10 minutes. The floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Saila. A very good morning to everyone from attending this webinar. My name is Heng Wei from the Parents Teacher Association of Sekolah Kebangsaan Pendidikan Khas Tuaran Sabah in Malaysia. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Haja Hanani Binti Harun Rasid of Simeo Sen. Malaysia for giving me this opportunity to share my experiences and my view about the involvement of students with disability in arts and culture. Let me share with you a little bit about my boy. His name is Chen Jai Sheng and he's 10 years old now. He's studying in the same school where teacher Stephanus is teaching. At the age of four months old, he was diagnosed with FEVR which is a hereditary disorder that can cause progressive vision loss. His right eye is no longer functioning and 
and he is using the only eye now, which is the left eye. It is also low vision. Consistent follow up are done at the hospital, and his condition is considered stable now, as per, as per the eye specialist. He had also undergone pediatric occupational therapy at the age of four for improving his concentration and attention. During his kindergarten years, he couldn't sit still for more than 10 minutes, but now he can sit for a few hours to do reading or playing. He was a shy boy and reluctant to accept changes when he joined the school, but now he has confidence to make presentations on the stage. Thanks to the teacher in the school for encouraging and giving him opportunity to try out. As a parent, I am very proud of his achievement and will continue to let him explore new possibilities. Over the years, I have been trying my best to find out ways to help him in terms of medical treatment, his study, as well as obtaining necessary skills so that he can be independent in the future. Malaysia is a multiracial country. Therefore, we are able to learn different arts and cultures from different races since our childhood. I am lucky that the elements of arts and cultures are being integrated in, into his study materials and school activities. For example, there are articles in his textbooks about the traditional food, traditional dances, festivals of different races in Malaysia, as well as the history of Malaysia. Students learn to respect each other, and this cultivates and nurtures the spirit of patriotism. His school has also organized the patriotic activities every year to celebrate our National Day. I would like to share my view about the one month long patriotic activities that was held recently at his school. The groups involved are the parents, the, the school and the students. Parents should encourage and support their, student, the, their children to participate in different activities organized by the school so that they can be exposed in different areas. With the help of advanced technology, parents can easily search the related videos and other resources from internet as a guideline when planning and preparation. As for the school, it has provided a platform for students to perform themselves and to unearth their talent at the same time. Teacher will provide the guidance and necessary trainings for the students to enhance their skills for future competitions so that they are able to meet the international standard. One of the examples is that our students group, the trio, has won three international competitions led by teacher Stephanus. I am glad that he is teaching in our school. His dedication of work and the passion of providing fun learning experiences to our students have established a good relationship with the students. Teacher, thank you for everything. As for students, they are benefited throughout the entire preparation process. They learn to pronounce, sing, draw, or even act to present their piece of work. This will also build up their confidence level when facing the audience or speaking in public. Throughout the activities, they also learn the meaning of patriotism and the ways to show their appreciation. I feel that the involvement of all parties are equally important. I always believe that when God closes one door, he opens a window. Therefore, it is important that no matter if we are the parents or the educators, we have to understand the ability of the children. I like the motto of teacher Stephanus. Focus on ability, not disability. They might not be good 
in the academic result, but they may have other talent like drawing, singing, playing musical instrument, etc. Spend time with them and understand their needs and feelings so that they know you are care for them. Maybe you will see surprises one day. The journey of success begins with a single step and we should never give up. Therefore, through enhancing their learning potential and the available resources, I'm sure that the talented students with disabilities will have a higher achievement in the future with the support of the society, the parents and the teachers. Let us work together to make a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Hay. Your session was marvelously uplifting. Thank you so much, Madam. Next, it is our greatest pleasure to welcome Associate Professor Architect Noahshima Muhammad Nordin to share insights on her child's involvement in arts. Uh, for 10 minutes, uh, Architect Noahshima, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, can you allow me to share my screen? On your end, the host has to allow me, okay? Can you see my screen? Hello? Okay, yes, we can. Okay. Let me go back to my first slide, sorry. Okay, you can see me? Yes, we can. Okay, now uh, let me start. Reset. Okay, this is a true story. I have a lot of slides. Please bear with me and I am going to go through everything very quickly. All right. Okay, uh, whatever I'm showing today is a true story about, um, about my, my daughter. Okay, where she uses tool for communication, education, and also career. Okay, this, uh, my daughter is Jamila. She is currently 19 years old, uh, born in 2002, Slango, Malaysia. And uh, she is now a visual artist. Um, she has broken new grounds and brought her voice to the world through art while creating history to inspire others. Um, she is known uh, quite well. Okay, um, there is a broad uh, spectrum of autism. She was diagnosed with uh, autism when she was four and, uh, and have a lot of challenges. Now she has uh, overcome all the challenges. And what works for my daughter might not work for others. Uh, so some of the materials and the content from our journey might be disturbing to some organizations. Uh, so please forgive us in advance. I am uh, quite a blunt woman and a very straightforward person. Uh, what I am going to say might hurt people, so please forgive me. Okay, these are the list of challenges that Jamila has. Uh, when she was young at four years old, uh, she had communication challenges, social skill challenges, behavior, sensory, educational. She has everything, everything that you can name under autism. Okay, now this one is showing how uh, she uses art as a communication tool. She was nonverbal when uh, from birth until um, until she's uh, ten years old. Okay, so for ten years she communicate. Uh, she started sketches at four actually. So for uh, what, six years, she started to communicate using drawings um, to express her emotions to me. And then the, at seven years old, she started to tell stories of events that she went through, that she experienced through her sketches. And um, she continued uh, uh, doing sketches uh, at the age of 14, and, uh, and today she put history onto her canvas uh, when she became um, a visual artist. Okay, now I am going to show you the, the kind of education she achieved, uh, she, she received, okay. When she was young, before uh, primary school, I, she went to a normal kindergarten uh, using a standard structured learning system and she was standing there. 
uh, in primary school, uh, she uh, entered uh, a normal primary, private primary school. And over there, of course, uh, being uh, a school, uh, they have a standard structure. And um, the, therefore, I give a personal coaching to Jamila using a people-centered learning system that is a modular structure and it's a visual technique uh, as an additional because the school I want her to go to school uh, to socialize, uh, but on my end as a parent, I teach her academics. So I told the teachers, do not force her to learn. Uh, I will handle her academic uh, personally at home. And she progressed well. Uh, uh, when she was in primary school because the school, um, they integrate art and culture very well. I will show you how, how they do it. Uh, and Jamila really progressed well there. And she started to speak when she was at the school. And uh, uh, in primary school, uh, after primary school, after she sat for UPSR, she was very good in maths and science and scored very well in arts especially. And um, um, I move her to PPKI. So here I would like to ask for forgiveness. Jamila uh, did not progress well. In fact, she reversed when I put her in PPKI. Uh, probably because the standard um, of teaching there is very, you know, they use a standard structure. It is not um, for individual uh, student um, the capability. Even though uh, our the the policy and also the, the philosophy of the PPKI, uh, the special need uh, in Malaysia, um, they have it right uh, that uh, to teach the student based on the individual capability. Uh, but um, I discovered that the teaching technique there are very standardized. Uh, so Jamila didn't like it and asked, and she wants to leave the school. So I took her out and fully homeschool her and I use a people-centered learning system uh, as a core and she really progressed well, in fact, better than the normal people as, um, you know, at her age. So I will uh, show you uh, her journey in art and education system uh, from here. So this is um, her kindergarten, uh, the normal kindergarten. She slightly progressed but remained non-verbal. And uh, when she was there, she sketches uh, her emotion whenever she's happy, sad, or really cry or angry. Uh, this is how I communicate with her uh, because uh, she don't talk. And this is uh, her sketches on sadness, happiness, surprise, and anger. And then uh, in primary school, uh, she started to tell stories of events she experienced through her sketches. She still didn't talk uh, because at seven and eight, and nine, for three years, uh, she was, uh, you know, no verbal from her. So this is her uh, on the left. You see her there. And she mixed around well with her friends. Um, and when I pick her up from school, instead of getting notes uh, on uh, academic, uh, this is what she, she has in her exercise book. She drew the chaotic classroom environment with children screaming and crying. And... Uh, um, at home, she do house cleaning activities, so she will put everything on paper, bedtime routine, bathing and shower routine, grooming activities, birthday celebration, travels by air, sweet holiday memories, water sport during holidays, and academic activities at home. So this is um, me. If you look, the lady on the right there, uh, that was me. And, 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 and there's two girls there, that is Jamila and her younger sister. Um, I always teach them maths, arts, uh, you know, sometimes we sing. So she put everything on paper um, uh, into her sketches. Extracurricular activities uh, at school also, she had it uh, drawn, happy moments during class party in the school, she will draw it so I know what's happening in class, let people exchange uh, presents. And English and maths lesson at school, whenever I asked her what she learned, she will draw instead of telling, uh, she draw. And I know that the maths teacher are very kind, so the children are, are playing and the English teacher are very strict, so all the students concentrate. And dance lesson when the teacher teach uh, the children how to dance step by step. So she came back and draw the step of the, each student and how they stand side by side um, each other. 
And Jamila dance. That is Jamila. Uh, she's very good at dancing. She just need to look at the dance step once, and she can do it uh, very well. Even after she complete her primary school, the school still call her to join the concert uh, dance every um, and, and in the last year and the year after that. So the and and after the the concert, she came back and draw all the different activities of dance and you know the MC and the people singing and everything. And uh, when the school conduct uh, a parade uh, for Madeka celebration, and she came back and draw all the colorful people together, you know, um, doing the parade, and. So those are, if you see here, these are all, uh, you know, how Jamila uses art as a tool to communicate and also to learn. And now she document history into her canvas. This is the type of drawing that she have now as an artist. Um, on the left, you can see um, about COVID, history of COVID, like now, you know, be, uh, uh, the, the nurses, the, the people with COVID and the social distancing and everything. And on the right, you can see uh, her story about, uh, about Merdeka. It's about Malaysia, actually. So uh, in the background is all the different flags during from British colonization, Japanese invasion until today with all the prime ministers there. And this is... Uh, her Unity in Diversity series, uh, where she put all the five different races of Malaysian uh, together with the Malaysian flag, uh, simulated together into the skyline of Malaysia. And her this kind this series was uh, used by the Prime Minister Tun M before in 2019 to uh, for the Medica celebration, Archa Putrajaya. Okay, now I'm going to show you her progress in terms of um, um, education. Okay, life is a continuous journey of transformation. So we transform from one to another. Um, of course, we have to be passionate about it. Okay, when I started teaching Jamila how to draw a circle, she ended up doing a spear. And every time I teach her to draw a shape, she will turn it into, into a 3D object. So from there, I learned uh, Jamila sees 2D and, uh, shape as a 3D object. Like every time she sees a circle, she will imagine it like a clock, like a sphere. Uh, whenever she sees a square, she imagine it like um, um, a, a cube. And she sees whenever I, uh, she sees triangles, she will imagine it like a pyramid. So therefore, her, the way autistic child, especially my daughter, it, the, their, their mind, is beyond our mind. And I started, uh, you know, when, when, she, when she goes to primary school, I tackle her academy. So this is how I do. I do research. I do, you know, I, I, and I, I look at the brain, uh, trying to understand her. So our brain system, we have receiver, we have output. Okay, what is the receiver in the brain? Speech, language. Jamila has delay in this. She's very weak in speech and language. But now she overcome that already. And... We, uh, the receiver in the brain, the sensory, she has a sensory overload over, over movement, over sensation, touch, smell, vision, and everything. Um, uh, things that we cannot smell, she can smell, you know, uh, she's very sensitive on that. And I have to ensure that uh, all these are in comfort with her in order for her to give a good output, I mean, to, to do to perform an executive function. So when the, the, the sensory are stable, her emotions and behavior are stable, then she will do better in thinking and can do better in planning and problem solving. This is uh, how I discovered. So when I discover how to tackle her, then I started to teach her using visual technique because she talked to me using her visual by sketching. So I teach her using that technique. So I have to adapt to her, but not to, you know, to teach the way I want to teach, but I have to teach her the way she learned. And I studied all the primary school curriculum and turned into my curriculum to tailor towards um, her way of learning. And this is the standard curriculum uh, of the school. Um, 
in Malaysia. And this is how I revise it. Because when I use the standard structured learning system that is using multiple tasks uh, uh, in one semester, uh, it did not work for her. When I changed into a modular system, it really worked for her very well because it's very flexible. And, you know, um, you know the learning i can i can change the learning duration i don't have to follow the school uh, learning uh, time so for instance this division she can do it very well in fact she can advise me where i go wrong after she learned this and captured this very well and this is uh, at home um, every day at night and also weekend this is where i am with my children uh, i customize using the the my my lecture notes uh, and uh, that is people centered and i apply all these five uh, six principles understanding application discovery character building social skills survival skills and using my mapping is very effective for science I, did, I don't use the book and read the text, everything's in a form of visual. And I went to the school and teach Jamila together with people, uh, children that are very weak uh, during the school holidays in December. This is what I do. And, and uh, when that, that's her primary session. And she did very well. She did uh, set for UPSR together with the normal children. And when she moved to PPKI, uh, sadly, um, the, um, uh, the objective is correct to develop individual potential, but uh, the school is running standard curriculum because all the classes are running the same mathematics that is, that is kindergarten level and uh, Bahasa Malaysia is standard too, but Jamila is already 14 years old at that time. She already set for UPSR. And she's not happy and asked me to, she said she don't want to go to school. So I pull her out and, and at the school, um, she, drew, she, she enjoyed drawing, she draw murals at the school. Um, um, but in terms of academic, uh, she did not progress. So um, I studied all the different direction that she can take, the educational route uh, to move her into visual art. And... Uh, I had a change of direction, pull her out from school, and the most suitable for Jamila is homeschool system that progresses as an artist at her own capacity. And from the age of 16 onwards, uh, she is with me, uh, fully homeschool. Uh, you, you know, I practice the customized homeschool approach, uh, moving in parallel with her career. And this is she uh, enjoying her work at her art studio. So instead of moving from bottom up, like, you know, the norm in, in the world is we go to school, we go to university and we have a profession. So for her, I put, I moved the other way around that is top bottom, which I said her profession because I know she is good in art. So, okay, that's, that's her future. So set her profession and I inject with all the other curriculum like art and research, home science, physical exercise, exhibition, tour, and you know, of course, ed, uh, occupational and speech therapy will go along uh, as I go along teaching her. So this is my homeschool curriculum, uh, as it's called. Um, and uh, I applied my reference and parameters at the brain function and also all the positive features of autism. Um, you know, we look at the positive thing, just ignore the negative, you know, so, um, slowly the negative will become positive. So we began, um, she began her homeschool with live painting competitions because I need to test whether I mind doing the right thing or not. So I put her into competition and she won uh, um, all her, her life when, uh, competition. She, she won a prize. Uh, weekly winner at National Art Gallery in 2017 and 2018, she... Uh, won third place at the National Olympic competition, live painting for six hours over there. And she also do a lot of live painting for Merdeka events. Um, yeah, and numerous live uh, painting um, uh, at in, uh, uh, autism events, uh, like yearly autism, and also a lot of live painting video shooting by various media at our art studio and also at the TV station. And then in 2019, she started to move uh, into doing marine sculptures. 
And uh, parallel to art, I also implement other basic skills like comprehension, survival skills, and also social skills. These are all the things that she needs. Um, and uh, participation in sport activities. Also the basic skills of home science and uh, art of science, uh, art of home science, like food preparation, cooking and everything for survival. And yeah. social skills um, all come naturally. And of course, you know, all the other activities related to art. And where is she now? Uh, all her success has been documented in the Encyclopedia of British Pedia uh, when she was 18 years old last year. And she is currently a Genty Honorary uh, as a young leader uh, for tomorrow um, at ASEAN level. And she was in the World Generation Act last year, being um, creative and committed against the virus together with other creative individuals published by uh, Paris um, Agency France in Paris. And currently, she is an impact artist appointed by the Talents Foundation uh, in uh, Switzerland uh, for sea pollution awareness. And she has won a lot of national awards, 10 altogether at the moment, and 10 um, international awards. Um, and she have uh, Mer Marie, she also, as a featured artist um, at various platforms, and media coverage, newspaper, worldwide news site, worldwide social site, worldwide uh, well, everything, and television broadcast and YouTube, media coverage, live interview in TV, and a radio, and she has impacted on various industries, that is art industries, sustainable industries, social entrepreneurship, and um, education industries, uh, media communication industries, music industries, fashion industry, philanthropy and charity. She do a lot of charity work also. And um, like we do sharing session with the art industry, collaboration with uh, body corporates uh, for their CSR mm -hmm. and, and all this. Okay, now I need to conclude. The standard teaching structure she stagnant or digress. But with a people-centered learning system, she do very well. So art as a tool of transformation in communication, in gaining knowledge and in career. So you see the picture of um, Jamila on the right uh, dancing. Uh, um, you know, that's the culture that she enjoy a lot. So everyone are born different, therefore we should not have a standard and rigid curriculum system. Education system should be designed as people-centered. Variety of people require a variety of approach in learning in order to formulate a workable solution. Teaching models should be informal, flexible, and based on individuality. Okay, Jamila always send me this message, mommy don't scold me. So I have lectured for 25 years, conduct talks for, 14, for two architects for 14 years, practice as 36 years as an architect and a mother uh, to a special child for 19 years. I have my own uh, and do things my own way. No one can influence me, but my daughter has changed me. I have learned to change my teaching, uh, my technique of teaching. She is a change maker. People with different ability are born to change us. My personal experience are uh, rigidity and bureaucracy destroy creativity and efficiency. We should enrich our education system with our art and culture in order to be seen in the world map in our own unique way. So these are, you know, understanding and embracing the different ways of thinking and doing can release the true potential of an artistic child. So these are all the successful artistic uh, in the world and you need to be different um, uh, you know, autism is differently able to be outstanding. You need the ASD trait. According to Aristotle, no great mind has ever existed without a touch of madness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Associate Professor Architect uh, Nahashima. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Heng Yawui, uh, for the great details, information of your children's amazing journey. We really appreciate it. And we have a message here from teacher Alia from Malaysia to Madam Heng. You are a great mother. And we have also a message uh, for teacher Will Chan from Thailand to architect Nohashima. You are such an amazing mother who really understands your daughter. 
We realize how to build on her abilities. Hope she can reach her potential with dedication and determination. Thank you so much for the positive feedback we received from the participants. And to participants who have been loyal with us for, for this webinar from 10 a.m. until now from Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines, Indonesia, Vietnam, Myanmar, Brunei, and Singapore. Thank you so much for joining us. Now we have come to our Q&A session. Okay, uh, I have a question here for Mr. Dede. Mr. Dede from Indonesia. There's a question from YouTube from Virginia Nunes. Okay, she's asking, what are some of your intervention programs in inclusive setting for learners with disabilities in junior high learners with learning disabilities or intellectual disability? Uh, Ms. Sohaila, can you repeat the yeah, question? Sure. What are some of your intervention program in inclusive setting for learners with disabilities in junior high? With learning disabilities or intellectual disabilities, uh, is this intervention program, yeah. Intervention, not especially in arts and culture. Uh, yeah, not specifically in arts and culture. It's easier. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, intervention program is very uh is various in, in Indonesia, especially in uh public schools and also in uh, private schools. It's very different. Uh, some private schools who have uh, like higher uh, fee uh, that parents have to pay, they have more uh, like more uh, good services rather than in uh, public services. But uh, some in uh, Indonesia now uh, we have like recruit uh, for the uh, special uh, education teachers in some schools in Indonesia, and they uh, will uh, work with the classroom teachers on developing the curriculum and uh, like uh, modification uh, of the uh, program uh, learning strategies, uh, developing the media, and uh, yeah, is is uh, how what, what uh, the the teachers in the classroom can uh, work with the students with disabilities in the. Uh, in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also uh, have a new regulation about the uh, accommodation for uh, students with disabilities in uh, public schools, uh, which is uh, all, of this, all of the schools uh, mandated to uh, modify, modify their curriculum and also have, they have to uh, like doing some, some uh, adaptation for the student. And also the local government, uh, they also mandated to uh, establish uh, like uh, disability uh, unit services in the uh, local government that uh, work to uh, doing assessment and evaluation. Uh, support the public in uh, some uh, really in, in mm. Mr. Dede? Okay, thank you, Mr. Dede, for your feedback. Okay, now I have a question for Assistant Professor Ashamir. Assistant Professor Ashamir, question for you. How do we promote arts and culture when it is considered only a side activity or co-curricular activity and not something administrator consider important? Um, I would not say that in general, administrators would not see the beauty of arts and culture because in my university, when I sat as uh, a deputy director, there was premium really on how arts would you know, have its role in the university. Well, I would just simply like to say that it's a matter of knowing how to put the role of culture and the arts that, that should not be focused on only one particular aspect because in the culture and the arts here in the university we are not just doing entertainment valuing because you know that's what most administrators would assume that arts is just for entertainment but we also do fostering culture fostering and at the same time in culture fostering and we develop heritage and all those particular aspects that you know develop the nationalistic approach of how we mold 
or artist, not just the students with special needs, but everyone in particular. And of course, we also do research edification. This is the goal of culture and arts in our university, wherein we try our best to make sure that the administrators see what is the direction, because I believe there is no such thing as, like you said, um, a temporal activity for culture and the arts. Just make sure that you know what the goal is and what direction you would like for your students and all the parents and the communities involved would go to with this avenue. Arts is really a very powerful avenue to mediate people. I would not uh, limit the power of music and the arts. You, you have seen testimonies from parents that we had a while ago. That is already a living example on how we could really uh, empower the role of our students using culture and the arts. Like I said, it's a matter of repackaging, a matter of knowing what direction will you bring your students rather than just focusing only on one umbrella, which is entertainment. Competition is also there. It's necessary because we want them to grow. But like, I, again, I said, we have to see how humanistic can it reach out in the community when, when we want these uh, activities to prosper for a long period. Because we, like I said, if you want to focus on developing your students, do not focus only on short-term goals. Mm -hmm. Maybe the admin should see what are the long-term goals for these students to arrive to that particular direction. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Assistant Professor Alshamir. Okay, last question for Mr. Stephanus and Mr. Nutan. What is the best music instrument to start with our special students? Okay, uh, I will... I will answer first. Okay, so sure. for me, yeah, start what you have. Start what you have in your class or in your music classroom. So uh, for example, like me, I have more on uh, musical instrument like percussion. So I'm start with percussion. So after that, I see the what uh, the student uh, most uh, like to have it like they like the sound of ukulele so i will move to ukulele so uh, what i can advise start what you have because if i say start with the traditional instrument but in your place you don't have so uh for me uh start what you have and then explore it and try to uh to uh step by step yeah that's from me thank you mr Stephanus. For me, I totally uh, uh, agree with Stephanus. And for here, we start with the chorus group. Yeah, they uh, sing together and then we continue with piano and then continue with uh, string instruments like violin, viola, cello, or, or guitar, something like this. Hmm. Okay, thank you, Mr. Nathan. Thank you to all the speakers who have responded to our questions. Uh, again, oh, we have come to an end to our, of our webinar. Thank you to all our inspiring speakers for taking the time to speak to us today on a very important topic of arts and culture for the students. Your input on how arts and culture can positively affect students when they involve themselves in arts and culture is certainly inspirational. And we thank you for what you do for the community, for your children, which are truly meaningful. With that, uh, I end this session. I would like to apologize for any mistake. Uh, and thank you so much for all of the speakers here. All of you are wonderful, and we hope you keep inspiring everyone around you. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum. Now over to you, Miss MC. Okay, thank you, Madam Suhaila. Thank you to our distinguished speaker for today's insightful session. Also, thank you to the active participants in Zoom, YouTube, and Facebook for your words of encouragement, support, and for all the wonderful questions. Now, it is an honor to invite the Head of Training and Consultation Division, who has been providing her full support for this webinar and contribution of ideas knowledge and for making this webinar a success. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I honor to invite Madam Monisha Matsha to deliver her closing remark. Please welcome Madam Monisha. The floor is yours.
Thank you, Miss Haila. Assalamualaikum and good afternoon to everyone. CMSN Organizing Committee. Our speakers for today, Mr. Ashamir Brian Barira Arifuddin, Assistant Professor 3, Teaching Music Education, Creative Movement, Motor Learning and Professional Education, University of Southeastern Philippines. Mr. Dede Suprianto, Teacher Trainer, Ministry of Education and Culture, Indonesia. Mr. Stephanus Lucas, Special Education, Music Education Teacher, Sekolah Kebangsaan Pendidikan Khas Puaran, Sabah, Malaysia. Mr. Nutan Surimpeng, Orchestra Coordinator, Thai Blind Symphony Orchestra, Thailand. Madam Heng Yok Wee, Vice President of Parents Teachers Association, Sekolah Kebangsaan Pendidikan Khas Puaran, Sabah, Malaysia and Associate Professor Architect Norhashima Muhammad Nordin, Founder and Art Manager to Art Jamila Gallery, Selangor, Malaysia. And to all teachers, parents, guidance, NGOs, institutions from senior member countries. I am Monisha Maksha, the Head of Training and Consultation Division of Senior Sen. Let me begin by thanking all of you for your great efforts to attend this webinar. It is indeed a pleasure for me to be here with everyone today. Alhamdulillah, we have reached the end of the webinar. In accordance with our objective, which is promoting teacher capacity building, Senior Sen aims to create awareness and advocate on elevating talent and potential for students with disabilities through arts and culture. I hope by now, all of you have a deeper understanding and perhaps new perspective on how arts and culture can benefit students with disabilities. I also hope that as educators and parents, we can support our children's patients wholeheartedly. I couldn't deny that academic subjects are important. Still, we also need to widen our view and perspective on arts and culture as one of the elements that can help in developing learning skills for learners with disabilities. Takeaways and input from this webinar will help to empower students' potential in arts and culture area. Therefore, I hope by now all of you have the ideas and knowledge on how to elevate students' talents to a higher level locally and perhaps internationally. This effort also will be indirectly benefit in raising awareness on local arts and culture for the future generation. From the sharing session earlier, I believe all educators in this webinar and now will be able to develop various methods and approaches in implementing arts and culture in the curriculum at school. Hopefully, all educators here can now devise interesting and attractive teaching materials related to arts and culture for students with disabilities. It is highly appreciated if you can share all the ideas and takeaways from this webinar with other educators and parents which can benefit all students with disabilities in your community. Important initiatives like this should be emphasized wider and beyond. Last but not least, on behalf of Senior Sen, I would like to express my deepest appreciation to all six distinguished speakers today for their dedication to sharing their knowledge, experience, and thoughts on elevating talent and potentials through arts and culture, specifically for students with disabilities. I assure you, the knowledge sharing just now has enlightened all of us on the benefits of arts and culture to students with disabilities on way to exploit their talents and potential and set them up for a higher level of success in the arts and culture field. Ladies and gentlemen, on a different note, I would like to invite all of you to visit the Sinasen website and follow the Sinasen social media account on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to connect with us and be updated with our programs and activities for special education. Thank you very much. Until we meet again in the upcoming Senior Sen programs, Assalamualaikum and stay safe to everyone. 
Thank you, Madam Monisha. Please be reminded that the link to the evaluation form is now activated for you to fill up and you have approximately two hours from now to do so. Only when the evaluation form is completed, you will receive your e-certificate of participation within 14 working days. Now, before we close the session, please welcome the Director of CMSN to give away the e-certificate of appreciation to all of our speakers for today. We shall start with Mr. Stephanus Lucas from Sabah, Malaysia, and a few words from you. Mr. Stephanus? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Kosimio Sen, for giving me this opportunity and platform. And as, as I always mentioned, focus on ability, not disability, and continue work with students with disability. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Stephanus. Next, Mr. Dede Suprianto, and a few words from you too. Uh, thank you uh, so much for the CMSN and also all of the speakers as well as, as, well as, uh, as well as all of the participants that joined this uh, uh, webinar. It's, uh, it's an uh, honor for me to uh, join this uh, webinar and also, yeah, we like want to spread the uh, uh, optimism, even though there is some uh, challenge and uh, elevating the uh, arts and culture to our students, but there is also uh, a solution that we can uh, uh, solve this problem. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Didi. Next, Mr. Nutan Sulin Peng. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to share my student talent and abilities. And we hope that we can be there in person in your country. Thank you. Okay, last speaker, Mr. Ashami Brian Barrera Aripude, and a few words from you too. Hey, thank you so much for uh, inviting me in this webinar. Um, I am truly grateful for all these uh, experiences and learning that I've learned together with my co-speakers. And I would like to also mention the administration of the University of Southeastern Philippines for endlessly supporting your teachers who are in line with the culture and the arts and who continue to up, uh, uplift lives through these advocacies that most of us really have commonly shared in our discussion a while ago. And on behalf of all Filipinos around the world, we also thank you for giving us the opportunity to share what we have for everyone. Thank you. Magang salamat. God bless us all. Thank you, Mr. Ashamir. And to our guest speakers, Madam Heng Yo Ui, a few words from you. Thank you, Sumio Sen, for giving me the opportunity to share my experiences and my view. I'm happy to learn the different kinds of methods and ways in helping the student with disability. This is really helpful as a mother, and I can share with my friends and relatives, and um, I mean, uh, with others uh, person. Thank you, Sumio Sen. Okay, thank you, Madam. Lastly, to our Associate Professor Architect, Nohashima Mohamed Nordin, to receive your e certificate of appreciation and a few words from you. Associate Professor, we can hear your voice. All right. Okay. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and also um, to see the wonderful, passionate people from Thailand, Philippines, and also Indonesia. They are very rich in culture and they are truly passionate. And um, Sabah is so lucky to have Mr. Stephanes, you know, for being so passionate in the music. Um, I wish, you know, as a parent who went, who had to go through um, all this, um, um, you know, uh, that uh, passion, practical and implementation, it is, is very crucial, um, not just philosophy and theory. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you, Associate Professor. We have come to an end of our webinar. Thank you to Dr. Hanani, to all of our speakers, our moderator, and of course, to all of you here from all around the world. Also, a million thanks to all of this amazing group of people who have been working so hard for this event success. Thank you everyone for your amazing effort. Do follow us on our social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter for more updates on our upcoming webinar. Again, please be reminded that the evaluation link is currently open and you are given until 2.30 p.m. Malaysia time for you to access the link. I would like to also remind you that the only participant who filled up and completed the evaluation form will be granted with the certificate of participation. For any inquiries, please email us at webinar at seniorsend.org and we will be more than glad to attend to any of your questions or suggestions. Thank you so much, everyone. Stay safe, stay calm, and take care. Thank you, Shimio. Thank you. Keep in touch. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Shut